What's up, everybody? January 5th, Friday, finally. 10-game slate coming off of uh, yesterday's weirdo two-game slate. Um, nothing jumping out as, like, really awesome tonight. I always like games where I can play against the Suns, but it's the Spurs, so they might just bring, like, a D-League affiliate instead. Um... I don't know. I'm hoping for some injury news to open up some value uh, because right now it feels bland. But I haven't totally dug in yet, so that's what this is for. Let's do it. First game up, Heat hosting the Knicks. 103.5 implied total for the Heat, which would be 13th on the night. Um, no major news for the Heat right now. I think I already have this in here. Yeah, I do. Um... Winslow still out, Waiters still out. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. So this is going to be a game big for the threes. By threes, I mean pointers, not the position. Okay, so this is going to be one where we take a deeper look at Wayne Ellington. Um... Hmm. I don't think I want any part of Josh Richardson. That price looks like a problem. And we'll have a deeper conversation on Whiteside, I guess. <laughs> okay, Whiteside is 7,600 on FanDuel, 67 on DK. Um, so on the surface... He looks like a good play um, because he's been good in the past. His permanent numbers and his per possession numbers. You know, we're we're working with a guy that has been you know a high level center in the past, but he's played 18 minutes, 20 minutes, 29 minutes, and 17 minutes in the four games he's played since he's been back. If you get Whiteside at 29 minutes. It's a great play. If you get Whiteside at 17 minutes, he's a no play. Uh, I have him at 27 minutes. I expect him to be ramped up at some point in time. <clears throat> but I don't know how to manage something like that. He, you know, he's got a game, he's got a day's rest. It's not as if they played yesterday. I don't know how, I don't... <sighs> Like he's a he's a good play on DK if you think that he gets the minutes that I'm projecting, but he's done that once since he's been back. Being on the right side of that is huge. I can't just outwardly disregard him, but I have to assume that he's, you know, low on the totem pole for me. It's not even that amazing of a game for him, but. His price is incredible if he's playing closer to real white side minutes. Okay, so Ellington is the other guy that I thought was like the best look of the day from a matchup standpoint. 4,900 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. Um, I don't necessarily love the price. And it's not the best game in the world. Um... But I wouldn't mind if he popped up on optimizers. Now let's just look at the rest of this for value. Tragic had a big game, didn't he? Yeah, 40, two straight 40 pointers. Four, well, 45 plus pointers. He's been playing bigger minutes. 37 minutes here, 38 in the previous game. Um, I've got him projected for 32 tonight. I don't see the need there on a 10 game slate. I don't really want any part of Josh Richardson. Only other guy I want to look at is Olinick, mostly on DK. Um, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. So he needs like mid 30s to hit value. 
Uh, he had 43 in the last one. Um, he had 43 in uh, Whiteside's first game back. Decent price, you know, shoots threes, which is great in this particular matchup. So I don't mind having a little bit of Kelly Olynyk, And that's probably just on DK. Um, I don't think that he has the best price on FanDuel. Other than that, I'm okay. I guess I need to look at Tyler Johnson. I hate the heat. I really do. Tyler Johnson... 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. You know, can you get to 30 is basically the question you're asking. He had 10 in the last one, 42 in the one before that. Um, I mean, he's a, he's a GPP guy. I don't want to have a ton of him, but like one or two lineups because he can put up, you know, 40 plus. When it's when the when he's cooking, at least. Okay. Next up is the Knicks. Uh, we might be seeing Tim Hardaway Jr. back shortly. Um, I saw as early as tomorrow. So, when he comes back, that will be interesting for rotations. You know, I know that they don't play the same position, but it, that's. 30 minutes or so that need to be divvied back up. I would imagine Beasley's going to go back down, but we'll see. You think if I keep picking Chris Tapps, Porzingis will have a good game? I don't seem it. Knicks, 98.5 implied total. Dead last on the day. Even worse than the Suns playing in San Antonio. Um, other than, I, I mean, I want to look at Beasley. I want to look at Zinger because I'm addicted. Um, I, Nilakina, Jarrett Jack thing's driving me insane. I don't feel like I can guess those guys correctly. So, poor Zingas. 8,800 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. He would need to get to 45. Two straight 27-point games. He had a quote a couple days ago or yesterday maybe um, saying that he was just tired, which is <laughs> not something you want to hear. He did four straight 40-point games plus the 50-point game there. The only... Like, I took him on these two games, so I think he looks good still, so expect 27 points, I guess. It's it's a terrible matchup in that they have the worst implied total, but he's priced down, and I can't ignore that. So he's a three for me. I can't just outwardly focus on him. Um, Cantor's no longer a play. Uh, Beasley on DK is just a, a play. Um, he's 6,500 on FanDuel and 5,300 on DK, which is just comical. Um, at that price, I'd like a lot of him, you know? Going at revenge game against the Heat. I'll, I'll play up that narrative. Heat give up the most, or they're the worst team in the short mid range, uh, which is a place that, you know, Beasley puts up a bundle of shots. So I'm, I'm a big believer in Beasley tonight, which means Beasley's probably going to turn into a pumpkin. Courtney Lee, 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. Um, I don't, I'm not going to force that one. Uh, Jarrett Jack, 4,200 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. I'm... That's not the one for me. If these, if this was a pace-up game, I would think about throwing a... 
you know, dipping my toe in the Jarrett Jack or Nil Aquino waters because they're going to get, you know, somebody's going to be decent between the two of them, but like, you just can't trust it right now. That's all I want in a crap, crap, crap game. Sixers Pistons. This one could be interesting. Um, expectation is that uh, Embiid will play. As of right now, Stanley Johnson is doubtful, and Andre Drummond is a game time decision. So for now, Drummond is in in my numbers, and um, Stanley Johnson is out. Uh, if we get news early enough that Drummond plays, then just continue to move on with exactly what I have here. If we get news that he is out, um, I don't believe that anything has changed, but let me double check. So Boban is still 3,500, so minimum salary on FanDuel. <laughs> DraftKings moved him up to 4,600. Jerks. Absolute jerks. It would still be a Boban night if he starts, um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So Sixers against the Pistons. Sixers 106.75 implied total. Uh, tied for eighth on the night. I want to fix that highlighting. There we go. So, um, I'm not a big fan of Simmons. I'll entertain Covington. I like Embiid. I'll entertain Sarich and Redick, or Sarich and McConnell, rather. Man, it's going to be a weird night. It's going to be dull ownership, I think. So Embiid, 10-5 on FanDuel, 10-1 on DK, needs, let's say 55 is where we want to hit. Fifty-two in the last one. Um, he's been uh, solid, we'll say, recently. Decent pace game. I'm fine with it. I'm not gonna go crazy over him, beat, but he looks good. Uh, Simmons, I'm just not there right now. Eighty-six hundred on both sites. That one I'm not worried about. Sarich is 6,700 on FanDuel, 66 on DK. Um, huh. I don't love it. it needs mid 30s. Three straight 40 point games, one with him, or two with Embiid, one without. You know, I'm, I can't just look. He's got a, he's got a decent price right now. Covington now six thousand on Fanduel, fifty six hundred on DK. He needs thirty. Um, two quiet games, but a thirty six pointer previously. He's actually been relatively quiet. He does have a shooting or a non shooting hand injury right now. He's been up and down. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna ignore Covington tonight. Well Yeah, he's not I'm not gonna go crazy over it. No Covington for me. Stick to my guns. McConnell, 4,400 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. He needs 25. Uh, two straight stinkers. You know, three big games previously. 
fits the same sort of mold as uh, Sarich. Is he going to get enough? Yeah, I, I feel like I would rather have McConnell on a day where Embiid is out just to free up, you know, opportunity. Um, I'm okay with having him in a lineup or two, but I don't think the Sixers are the spot. Now I'll move to the Pistons. Pistons, 102.25 implied total is 14th. Not the best. As I said, no Stanley Johnson here. And we are moving forward, assuming Andre Drummond plays. I don't have a ton of interest in Drummond. I, I am pretty interested in Tobias Harris. And that might be it. Piston's not really the best fantasy team tonight. 9,500 and 9,100 for Drummond. Um, not a guy that I'm interested in. Especially if he's... Like, even if he plays, you can't assume that he's 100%. Tobias Harris is 6,200 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK, which sucks. You know, so we're looking at, like, 35... Uh, three straight mid twenties games, which isn't the best, uh, but thirty five plus in the two previous. I think it's a decent matchup for him. Uh, I wouldn't want to just Tobias. Everyone should know what that is, including my Excel sheet. <sighs> yeah, I don't see the need for Ish or Avery Bradley's too expensive. Reggie Bullock, 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK, needs 25, that's sort of just his range, I'm not, not super interested there, I'm not super interested in Luke Kennard either, so that's not the spot. Boston Celtics hosting the Minnesota Timberwolves. Celtics, 105 implied total, which is 11th on the day. Uh, fun game, you know, from a, like an actual basketball standpoint. You know, two teams that you know, should be good for the near future. A lot of talent on the floor. Um... Tatum and Brown, Kyrie. Only guy that I'm not over the moon for would be Horford. And that's at least on DK. Um, Boston, Boston, Boston. Okay. Kyrie, 8,400 and 8,200. We need mid-40s for him. And that's just sort of where he ends up. He doesn't... Like, he hasn't been having any crazy games. He's just solid. 45, 39, 34, you know, 30, eh, 44, 43. That, like, that mid-40s game. He'll get Tyus Jones, which, you know, he should be able to be significantly better than. But there's also going to be a lot waiting for him in the paint. You know, you would think they would be better at the rim. I guess Towns is just that bad on D. It's crazy. It's a... Man, if their implied total was a little higher. Like, I'm not saying... He is a completely functional cash gameplay tonight. I wouldn't really... I'm not, I probably wouldn't have much of him in uh, a GPP. Horford is 7,000 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. I don't really see him as playable on DraftKings, but he needs 35 on FanDuel for value. Um, it's not a bad matchup for him, actually. But, yeah, 
I don't love the game. And there's not enough value in the salary for me to care. Jalen Brown, 5,800 and 5,700. He, he needs over 30. Um, I don't know who I prefer between him and Tatum. I've been super wrong on Tatum lately. Oh, I like Tatum. I, I just do. Maybe it's my Duke bias. And I don't want any of the down ballot guys for them. There's not, there's just not a lot there. You know, Boston's not that great of a fantasy team. Timberwolves, 101 implied total, tied for 15th. It's terrible, especially for a team that has, like, guys you want to play in fantasy. Oh, the coffee's good today. It's also freezing cold outside. Okay, so outside of Boston putting the kibosh on corner threes, we're pretty okay on everything. Timberwolves' prices have kind of mellowed out. I don't think there's going to be a ton to like here. Town, 60 or 9,200 on FanDuel, 9,000 on DK. He needs like 50 to look good. Last two, not good at all. I don't get the sense that Boston should be like his coming out party. Not that this is any barometer. I just want to see if... Okay, so he has played well against Boston in the past. Obviously two separate teams. Ah. <sighs> Something weird tells me that Towns is going to have a decent night, but I don't know. Jimmy Butler now. 9,800 on FanDuel. 8,400 on DK. Um, he's not playable on FanDuel whatsoever. But on DK, it's a different story. We need him to get to 50, though. Um, he's been there in his last three. Actually, he's just been giant lately. Jimmy Butler might want to stick it to the Celts. It's not the best game, so I don't want to go too crazy on it, but I'd like to have a little bit of Jimmy Butler. But 9,800 on FanDuel, that's, uh, that's probably too expensive for him. Wiggins, 5,700 and 5,900. Uh, not the spot for me. Taj, 5,800 and 5,700. Not a spot for me. Ty, 6,000 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. So this is a very key takeaway. Um, he needs 30, which has not happened in the last three. He's been super duper quiet. He can get to 30. Um, again, I don't want a ton of him because I don't really trust him. He's not going to shoot the ball all that much. Um... But I'd be okay with having him in a lineup or two in case Minnesota pops well. Just because of that price on DK. Um, 4900 is is low. You can't you don't really want him on uh, on FanDuel at 6000 Next up. Uh, Milwaukee Bucks and the Toronto Raptors. This should be a fun one. Um, Bucks. 108.75 implied total, third on the day. This is the best game from a fantasy perspective in terms of game total. You have the third and fifth highest um, implied totals. Lakers and Hornets is second and tied for sixth later on, but at 10.30, um, I don't think it carries the same weight because there's so much, you know, there's a lot of unknown roster crap that can come up. 
Um, so let's look at the Bucks now. I think I just made some really weird faces. I probably shouldn't have said that out loud because now you can like pause it and check to see if I did. Okay. I mean, I'm interested in Giannis, obviously. I don't see this as a Middleton game, but his price is a little bit better, I think. Uh, Brogdon is the guy that I want to pay attention to, and maybe Henson. So Giannis is 11,000 on FanDuel, 10-7 on DK. We need him to get to you know, 55 plus to be satisfied with with taking him. Hit 57 and a half in the last one in 29 minutes. Um, for reference purposes, because they played a couple nights ago, um, he only had 48 in the OT game. Doesn't change the fact that I'm interested in him and it's a good matchup. Bledsoe, 7,200 and 7,300. He's just kind of there right now for me. Um, it's not a horrible matchup. It's not, not anything crazy. He's just like a functionally good basketball player. But he's been having these swings. 18 points. 50. 18. 50. You can't get like if you if he hits you with one of those eighteen burgers, you're in trouble. That is going to sink you at that salary. You can't just disregard him because he's been playing well, and you know the games that he's putting up, those forty pointers are big. Um, I'm a little nervous about that up and down play lately. Middleton, 7,200 and 7,000. He needs... Can he get to 40? Th hasn't been there in his last five. Mid-30s won't grind you to a halt. Um, but Middleton doesn't get to the rim a lot, which is sort of the only weakness of the Raptors. They do tend to minimize threes a little bit, so that doesn't help him entirely. Um, I'm going to pass on Middleton. Only other guy I want to look at here is Brogdon, 4,900 and 4,700. So he needs, you know, mid 20s or higher. He's been steady in there, has the ability to pop into a 30 point game. So I would like to take a look at Malcolm Brogdon. And at that price, I'm, I'm okay with having a, a solid amount of him. Uh,. Henson, 4,700 on DK. Probably not, although he could go off. And Thon, I just don't have enough for enough minutes. Let's go to the Raptors now. As I said before, 107.75 implied total for the Raptors, which is fifth. Um, should be a decent setup. Oh, I am tired. On these days when I'm working from home, it is incredibly hard to force myself to also wake up super early to record these. Okay, um, you know, based on the shot profile, I think that I'm going it's going to be a full fade against the Rosen. I don't believe that it's a great matchup, and uh, I mean, I don't think his history is all that great against the Bucks. So, let's just take a look at his history here. Oh, yeah. He set the record for Raptors points in a game, however many nights ago, four nights ago, when I said fully fade him. <laughs> uh, obviously, I was just sandbagging everybody when I started saying this. I don't necessarily disagree with what I said at that time. 
maybe full fade was a little strong, but they dramatically limit mid-range shots. Now, apparently DeRozan can shoot threes this year, which is, who saw that coming? They limit threes. DeRozan, still, like, even this year, this isn't, we're not looking at other years. DeRozan, 15% of his shots are threes, so nothing crazy. He just happened to shoot the damn lights out. But you got to assume that he is going to be extra special chalky tonight. <sighs> Do I double down and say full fade DeRozan and see what happens? I, I, like, I really don't. <laughs> I don't like him tonight. It's, oh my god. Uh, it's so funny that they're playing again today. 9,300 on FanDuel, 8,900 on DK. You need him to get to 45-plus on FanDuel for value. You'd like him to hit 50 as a goal. 56 in his last one out, and then obviously the uh, the monster that I said get away from <laughs> a couple nights ago. And he'd been playing like shit before that, too. I might have to watch that game and see what his looks looked like, or was he just unconscious? Oh man, the comment section of this video is gonna be... <laughs> it's gonna be something else. Look, it's not a full fade of DeRozan. But he's not, like, super duper high up on my list right now. His last two games have been good. But, you know, he had a stretch of four before that that were non-advantageous. This doesn't fit what he's trying to do. What we're banking on him doing is being hot. Not necessarily anything that fits him. Um... But he's going to take a bunch of shots in a high pace game. So I think that it is smart to have a little bit of DeRozan tonight. I think that people are going to tell me that I'm stupid. And that I should have a ton of DeRozan because he torched these assholes a couple days ago. But I'm sticking to my guns that I don't love the matchup. And that what we saw was just more hot hand than anything else. But I'll have a little bit of him. He's going to put up like eight fantasy points or something tonight, and it's really going to piss me off. I'll get my full fade days backwards. All right, Kyle Lowry now. Again, this is not a great matchup for Lowry. Um, salary isn't necessarily the best right now either. 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. Oh, okay, so that's actually a little bit better than I thought it was. Um... Oh, Fantasy Cruncher just projecting the living hell out of Duros in the night. <laughs> it's comical. Okay, back to business because I'm already running long and I just don't have the brain power today. Can we get Lowry to like 40? Hit 45, but again, in OT, um, you know, he's been up and down lately. I, I truly just, oh my god, I, I might have blinders for this matchup. Because it doesn't look good for the Raptors on paper. I'm okay, again, I'm okay with Lowry just because of his role in the offense. But, and this it's a game that we're going to want to have people in, so I need to be conscious of that. Surge. Yeah, like this, it looks like a terrible Serge Ibaka game. He had 40 fantasy points against them in the OT. Fifty nine hundred and fifty five hundred. so we need him to get to 30-plus. He's done that in his last two. Had the stinker and then a game off, but he has been playing relatively well. I want parts of this game because of the total and the pace but I just I can't get crazy about the Raptors in this scenario I just I can't do it 
I don't see it in the numbers. And when push comes to shove, I want to go with my convictions because otherwise I'm, I'm, I'm just touting somebody else. So I would rather be wrong and use my own advice. I could I can learn from that. We'll see if I learn from this DeRozan shit. <laughs> I'm good on Valanciunas. I mean, a DeLon Wright game. Uh, if you think DeLon Wright's going to have 60 fantasy points again, go ahead. I mean, he's really good when he gets the minutes, but who the hell knows? I'm going to be good on that game now. And now let's go to uh, let's go to the next one. Mavs and Bulls. Is that real? The Mavs have the fourth highest implied total. Did I type that incorrectly? Nope. Are you really 4.5? Jesus. All right. Mavs, 108.5 implied total. Fourth on the night. And uh, I wasn't anticipating paying too much attention to the Mavs, but now we guess we got to look at them. Hosting the Bulls. Uh, Mavs like to shoot some threes. They s Bulls don't necessarily slow that down. They do take away that short mid-range game, though. <sighs> I wanted this to look different. I wanted it to look very, very different. All right, Barnes, 6,600 on both sites. Needs mid-30s or higher. Uh, that doesn't seem like I'm going to love it, but he can get there in the last two. He can also just not show up. For a guy that, you know, has an above-average usage rate, takes a ton of shots, to have 18 fantasy points and... 16 fantasy points in back-to-back -back nights is not a max player, even though his max salary is no longer max salary. Um, no, I'm going to pass on Barnes. Dennis Smith, 5,900 and 6,300. Damn you, DraftKings. I feel like FanDuel's pricing got softer since I left. He needs mid-30s. He's been decent his last three. Bull, he's, that would be against Dunn. Um, I will say I'm okay with a small part of it because of the matchup, or because of like the the pace and the the implied points, but nothing crazy there. Berea, fifty nine hundred and fifty three hundred. Been good in the last three. Needs thirty. Same sort of scenario for Berea as it was for Smith. Wes Matthews, 5,000 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. This is one that I'm going to take a look at. So we need 25 plus. It's been okay recently. Maybe the Mavs return in a corner. I'm going to bank on Wes Matthews tonight. Whoa, that's that's too high. So I'll have a smattering of those Dallas guys. Maybe like one of them in every line. Not every lineup, but you know what I mean. Not like stacking the Mavs. Yeah, that's probably it. I'll go to the Bulls. Bulls, 104 implied total, which is 12th. I am moving at a snail's pace today. I have to start splitting these up into two videos. All right, Bulls, Bulls, Bulls. And everybody looking good. Holiday done, Markinen and Valentine all need a look. Mm 
Okay, Chris Dunn, 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. I think he looks pretty good. It's not a horrible matchup for him. Dennis Smith, not exactly uh, some defensive wonder. I, had, I think I really like Chris Dunn. He needs like 40. Not the best game his last time out. Had 43 nights ago. You know, he's a little boom and bust, but I think this is a really good spot for Chris Dunn. Miritich, 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. I, I can't see it there. Uh, well, I can't see it on DK. Let me be more specific. Mir he needs 34 on FanDuel. Four straight 30-point games, five of his last six. Um, I'm fine with it. Not the best matchup in the world. Markinen, 5,700 and 6,200. Damn you, DK. It's 6,200 on DK. Um, he looks... I mean, Markinen's incredible on FanDuel tonight. Two straight 30-point games. Three of his last four, 33 or higher, including a 40-pointer. Uh, matchup looks good for him. I just wish his price was better on DK. FanDuel, fire him up as much as you want. He's a two on FanDuel. Um, he's a three for me on DK. But yeah, you, you want you want some marketing and, and a pretty decent amount. And then Justin Holiday, fifty nine hundred on FanDuel, fifty four hundred on DK. So he's a little bit more reasonable. We need him to get to thirty. Two straight thirties, three out of four. I'm okay with that. I think that. Whoop, wrong line. I think that in this game, you know, I might have one of each of. A chunk of Dallas guys, a chunk of Bulls guys, and just rotate them accordingly. I don't think that anybody really stands out that much for me on DK. God, I'm only halfway done, and I've been talking for 40 minutes. All right, uh, Spurs and Suns. There's not going to be too much to talk about here. Uh, Spurs, 111 implied tonal, which is first on the night. We'll have more to talk about for the Spurs than we will uh, for the Suns. Probably. God, what is... Kawhi could have a 1,000 tonight. I assume he's playing. Oh, my God. Obviously, you need to be cognizant of the fact that the Spurs might be up by 40 at halftime. But Aldridge, Kawhi, everybody looks good. It, this is going to be a hard game to avoid... If the Spurs were named a different team, this would be different. But 8,700 on FanDuel for Aldridge, 8,200 on DK. Now, admittedly, I don't like Aldridge as much with Kawhi in the lineup. Let's confirm that. Let's go to Wowie. I'm going to grab the Spurs. I want to change that date to last year just... For the sample and we want to know how everybody does with Kawhi on and with Kawhi off because I don't think that Aldridge I think Aldridge gets the biggest boost from Kawhi being off the court I think he gets a lot more touches not that that's like terribly shocking or anything but I want to know how much this Kawhi return impacts him because his salary is largely based on the fact that Kawhi does not play. He hasn't. I don't think that it's been updated enough to factor that in if it's a problem. So Aldridge, in all of the minutes without Kawhi, he, does, he gains 0.2 points per possession when Kawhi is off the floor, which is basically the most on the team of anybody that plays legitimate minutes. So that's something to keep in mind. 
he's a much different player with him out there. Now, that said, <clears throat> this is still a game where LaMarcus Aldridge should feast. We need him to get mid-40s. I don't see any reason why he can't do that. Um, the only fear is the matchup. It wouldn't actually shock me. This game is in San Antonio. It wouldn't shock me if Aldridge sat. You know, it doesn't get a ton of rest all that often. This could be a perfect opportunity to do that in a game where, you know, they could win if Pop had to play the point. But I like Aldridge a lot. Steady. Now, Kawhi, this is a no-brainer, I think. You would expect him to be hyper-efficient in this game. 8,100, though, on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. You need him to get to 40. Um, he put up 50 in his last one out in 30 minutes. I don't have a problem with it. I will reserve a little bit of judgment um, just because of the blowout potential, but, I mean, he should look good. But it, okay, let's, let's think about it like this. If they're playing really well, the way that Kawhi Leonard plays, and we'll say in the last year and a half, what was what's his points per minute? So in the last year, well, last year plus this year, 1.3 fantasy points per possession. That's his average on DK. So if we assume that he plays, let's say, 16 minutes in the first half, at a point and a half, that's 24 fantasy points. If they're blowing them out, that could we can, you know, we can say that he's being a bit more efficient and gets to 30. He might have a couple, like a sprinkling of minutes in the second half. Then, so he can get in a blowout. Kawhi can get there for how efficient he is of a basketball player. So I don't, I'm not totally concerned. He's not the type of guy that you need that last like five or six minutes from. Okay, Pau Gasol, 5,500 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Don't touch him on DK whatsoever. And if you think that he's going to get a solid amount of minutes because he didn't in the last game, only played 13. But if you think he's going to be over 20, uh, it's a pretty decent spot. Um, Kyle Anderson is 5,000 on both sites. I don't entirely trust that. Tony Parker, 3,900 on FanDuel. I'd be fine with that. He's 4,500 on DK. <clears throat> I'm less interested there. Parkerson? Parkerson. I was thinking about Kyle Anderson. Um, that's probably it for me from the Spurs because of the Spurs. Focus on Aldridge and Leonard. Now, the Suns. 99 point implied total, <clears throat> second to last on the night. Obviously, they're playing the Spurs. This is just a bad, bad, bad situation for the Suns. I hope nothing looks good here. Okay, Warren and Booker are the only guys, which is fine. Maybe Tyler Eulis. Booker is 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK, so it looks like we've normalized a little bit there. He needs to get to the mid-40s. Um, I don't want to like this, but I do. I assume he'll play no matter what. <laughs> He's going to shoot no matter what. Um, it's just a shit game for him. TJ Warren, 7,500 on FanDuel. Don't touch him. 6,100 on DK. <laughs> Touch him a lot. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's just, you know, he's going to shoot. And they're going to let him do his thing in the mid-range. Oh, that feels so fucking choppy. Mm. Uh, Marquise Chris, 5,800 and 5,000. 
man, I don't know. That doesn't it doesn't feel like it anymore. His salary has moved up, and he's not going to look good against the Spurs. Alex Lynn is forty one hundred on Fanduel, forty five hundred on DK. I guess if somebody has to play. 4100 that's amazing price on FanDuel. You could probably feel pretty comfortable there. Somebody's going to have to play center. They're not going to play Tyson Chandler in garbage time. Oh, that's a, that's just a miserable game. All right, I got to hustle. Four games left. Nuggets and Jazz. Nuggets, 106.75 implied total, tied for eighth. Let's pick up the pace here. Um, so I'm, I'm inclined to like Jokic since, you know, no go bear changes everything. Obviously he's been gone for a while. Um, and then maybe Wilson Chandler, but, and Trey Lyles, but other than that, nothing jumping off the page for Denver. Their salaries are starting to normalize. Uh, 9,700 on FanDuel for Jokic, 8,800 on DK. You need him to get to 50. Not the best game in his last time out, but he had a 50-pointer before that. Um, I'm, I'm fine with it. Murray is uh, not in play for me. Nor is Gary Harris. I'm not going to chase the shooting from the last game. I don't really want any part of Will Barton, although his salary is down a little bit. I don't necessarily trust the minutes. If that were a higher total, I might think about it. Trey Lyle, 6,200 on FanDuel. 5,400 on DK. Um, I'm comfortable riding the Trey Lyles train a little bit longer. Same for Wilson Chandler. They're just decent prices, you know? Decent filler. <sighs> to the Jazz we go. Jazz, 100.25 implied total. 17th on the night. Jazz are not a fun fantasy team. But we need to take a look because Donovan Mitchell plays in Utah, and he's awesome. Okay, so Mitchell. I mean, Mitchell favors and Hood all deserve sort of a little bit of a peek. Seventy five hundred on FanDuel, seventy five hundred on DK for Mitchell, so we need forty plus. Uh, thirty in the last game out, but fifty in the game before that. He's been good. Uh, I don't expect him to meet a lot of resistance on the Nuggets either, so I will entertain some Donovan Mitchell. There's nobody jumping off the page is like clear cut awesome tonight, which is kind of scary. Might be just balanced lineups. Favor 6,400 and 6,000. He needs mid 30s. Uh, had a couple straight 30 games. I don't have a ton of fear of Derek Favors either. Just to make sure that I don't have him in any lineups with Jokic. No thank you on Rubio. The only other guy I want to look at is Hood. 5,300 and 5,200. So he needs like 28 or 29. Ooh, two straight duds. Four out of five duds. So it's either a dud or he puts up 40, which is an exceptional way to play the GPP, at least. Yeah, I'm okay with Hood. I mean, he could dud, but if he gets 40, you're happy. Grizzlies and Wizards now. Ugh. Grizz, 
101 implied total, tied for 15th, and they're at home. That's dreadful. No Chandler Parsons. Uh, no Andrew Harrison. I don't know if who that even impacts. I don't think that Chalmers is going to get a ton of minutes regardless. It's, it's only Gasol and uh, Evans. Nobody else to look at here. Um, if you want to get weird and take a punt on Jarrell Martin on FanDuel, you can do it. That's the only You don't want to do it on DK. Evans is 8,400 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. You need him to put up mid-40s. I mean, he's been doing that pretty regularly. Um, I don't mind having a small amount of him. But nothing crazy. And Gasol, 8,200 and 7,500. So he needs low 40s. Um, just, um, that's a pass. It's just not the game. To the Wizards, 105.5 implied total is 10th. They're four and a half point favorites in Memphis. Tough to pull off. take a look at the main five guys but I don't really love any part of it wall 9300 and 8700 so you need wall to get to 45 plus it's a lot shouldn't meet much resistance though against the, the Grizz Beal has just been really really good lately I think, given the opportunity, I would I'd prefer Beal to Wall. Eighty six hundred on Fanduel, seventy nine hundred on DK. Let's just take one quick look at that. He's been at a you know solid clip recently. Porter is 6,800 and 6,300. You need mid-30s for him. Um, that one I don't like as much. Markeith Morris, 4,900 and 4,800. So all of their salaries are just kind of right on point. Only guy I want to look at is Gortat. Salary is kind of normalized now on DK. He's 4,600 on both. Um, so you need uh, 25 or so. For Gortat, it's he's a GPP guy, you know. It could be fifteen, could be thirty-five. And that is it for that game. Two games left: Blazers and Hawks. Portland, one hundred seven implied total, tied for sixth on the night. Hawks traveling across the country. Uh, Got to assume. This looks good for Portland. Oh, this is going to look very, very, very good for the two studs here, particularly Dame Lillard and Aminu. Yep. Lillard and Aminu look great. Smaller, awesome to CJ. And then we'll take a look at Evan Turner who's apparently going to get 30 minutes a game again. So Dame is 8,700 and 8,500. You need him to get to 45 plus. Um, this is a great spot to do it. No real worries about Schroeder. Played 33 minutes in his last game, only got 30 fantasy points, but got his sea legs back under him. Um, so I'm going to have a lot of Dame. To a lesser extent, I'll have some CJ, uh, just because I think the matchup is good. 
I won't have them together, I don't think. Although I don't really have any idea if um, how they correlate. Let's find out. Dame correlation with CJ as ah, just neutral. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Aminu. 5,400 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. You need, let's say, 27. Um, he can get there, but this is an, the ultimate Aminu game in that it's the team that, it's one of the teams that give up the most three-point attempts, including the team that gives up the most corner threes. A place where Aminu shoots... 16% of his shots. So if he can get, you know, an extra three or something up, that's that's big. Um, I like him as filler again. And then finally, we want to look at Evan Turner. 4,800 on FanDuel, uh, not the best. 4,400 on DK, also not the best. Uh, salary is now up. What was it in the last one? Because that'll tell the tale. Yeah, 3,800. So that, those $600 are pretty gigantic. That's three more fantasy points for value. So I'd be crazy if I said that I just wanted to completely disregard. No, you know what? I do. I don't. It's Evan Turner. I don't give a shit. To the Hawks we go. The Hawks are the Hawks, obviously. And I just closed a bunch of shit I needed open. Whatever. <laughs> I'm losing it here at the end. Uh, I will be going live tonight, though. Six o'clock. So... We'll have a lot more to talk about at that point. Once news starts coming out. Okay, so the Blazers are basically the opposite team than the Hawks in that they give up a crazy amount of threes. Or limit a crazy amount of threes. They give up way more in the mid-range. They're the inverse. Um, which is great for a guy like Dennis Schroeder, who not exactly a knockdown shooter. So let's look at Schroeder... Um, that might be it, actually. Maybe Baysmore. All the way up. 7,400 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. You'd like to see him get to 40. Um, not the best last game out. Couple straight high 30s games, plus a 40. They have a 100 point implied total, which is 18th. So it's, t it's hard to get super duper into it, but I'm okay with it. Bazemore, uh, his salary is just too high. It's a good matchup though. 6,000 on both sites, essentially. You need him to get to the mid 30s. I'm okay with it. I haven't been giving out a lot of fours. It's just a lot of threes. Everybody just sort of looks the same today. It's what I thought when I first took my first glance at it. I don't want Prince or Ilya Sova. I'd like to like John Collins, but you know, if he's only gonna play 20 minutes, the dude's been hyper efficient, but you know, if that goes south, he might get some run. 5,500 on FanDuel, 51 on DK. I'm getting too, we don't want that. Last game, Lakers and Hornets. Uh, Lakers, 107 implied total. That is tied for sixth. Expectation is uh, everybody will be playing for the Lake Show. So Lonzo looks good. Um, Brandon Ingram looks okay. KCP, Kuzma. Hopefully they light a fire under themselves. So Kuzma is 6,000 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. 
I mean, you should want an absolute boatload of Kyle Kuzma on FanDuel tonight at 6000 That is a ridiculous price. I don't even know how that happens. I don't feel the same on uh, DK. He's a 3 for me, but he's definitely a 2 for me on FanDuel, and maybe a 1. Now, Lonzo, on the other hand, 7800 on FanDuel, 6700 on DK. Um, I know he's been out for like two weeks, but I need him to get to 40, which he has shown that he can do. I'm very comfortable with Lonzo Ball. That's more of a DK only. Not DK only, but like... He's good on DK. He's probably a 3 on FanDuel. Um, Ingram. Ingram, I'm going to avoid. I don't like the price. I can't trust Randall right now. KCP. 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. You need him to get to 30. Um, you know, he had two straight games off. He's been in the mid-20s lately. But I think this game kind of fits KCP a bit. He's not one for getting to the, to the rack all that much. Why even bother? I'll just copy and paste that crap. And that's probably it for me. You know, Brooke Lopez looks valuable, but he isn't really. And then finally, we're going to go to Charlotte. Charlotte, 109.5 implied total. Second on the day in L.A. What? Just crazy. That's how bad the Lakers are on D. Okay, so people are going to get to the rim at a rate of whenever the hell they want. So we need to look at MKG. Frank to an extent, but I don't love it. And then we want to look at Dwight. Maybe Kemba. So Dwight, 8,600 on FanDuel, 8,400 on DK. Coming back to LA. What do we need, like 50? Sure, 45 plus. Quiet in his last two, but he had a couple big 40 pointers, 50 pointers before that. Love Dwight. Um, honestly, looks like one of the better plays of the night. Kemba. 8,000 on FanDuel looks good. 8,300 on DK does not look good. Um, I mean, mid-40s is going to get you there. I'm fine with him on FanDuel a little bit higher, but I don't really love him on DK. The price is kind of prohibitive. Batum is 6,000 and 6,500. Damn, come on, DK. Fix these prices for Charlotte. Uh, Batum, Batum, Batum. He needs 30 on FanDuel, which he's been at pretty regularly. Um, I have no problem with Batum there. I, he's probably a 3. I don't necessarily love him as much on DK, though. Guys I want to look at would be Kaminsky... Because of the pace of the game, I have to keep an eye on Kaminsky, but I don't necessarily love the matchup. MKG, on the other hand, I like a lot. Well, as much as you could like Michael K. Gilchrist, at least. He should be able to find his way to the bucket. And at 4,100, you know, he doesn't have to go too crazy. Three straight crap games, but he was hot a little bit earlier in the month. That's basically it for me. Scroll back to the top. It's a pretty big list, but it's uh, oh, it's a gigantic list. Paul Gasol, I went with. That's that's smart. I'm gonna parry this down by the time we get to uh, the live show. But 
that's going to be my player pool when I start digging into everything. It's just the first pass. Nothing set in stone. I don't really love a lot tonight. Nobody standing out, so we're going to need some injuries to open up some value. Uh, if anybody wants to get a peek at that, let me shrink that a little bit. That's almost everybody. But you should be able to pause it and get everything you need there. But that's it, guys. A 10 game slate. I went way too long. I don't like it. I don't. I don't at all. I kind of just want to fade DeRozan and make that my thing. But it seems dumb. But that's it. You guys know the drill. You know, like, subscribe, Patreon, Twitter, Reddit. You know the whole thing. Um, I will be back tonight, 6 p.m., live before lock. Hopefully something changes and makes this slate a little bit more exciting because I don't love it right now. Oh, we didn't throw everything into the optimizer. I really shouldn't be doing this right now. Don't have time for it. Nobody's going to watch this at the hour mark or hour plus mark of whatever we're at. All righty. I, I at least hope that the guys that pop up are guys that I've already looked at. It makes it a little bit easier. But if we see a bunch of guys that I don't even like, that's when I get nervous. On a slate I don't like, nothing good comes of that. All right, DK, optimal. Well, so we're getting a lot of white side, which doesn't surprise me. A lot of TJ Warren, cool with it. Ball, cool with it. Dunn, cool with it. Brogdon, cool with it. Um, I like that so far. Ball, Brogdon, Tatum, Zinger, white side, Dunn, Beasley, Warren. That's something I can go to war with. Let's see how much FanDuel looks different. Stretch it out. <sighs> Time is at 8.15. Where'd the morning go? FanDuel lineups. Yeah, I'm not going to stack the Mavs backcourt in that one, so... Don't think I'll go with the, the Dennis Smith Jr. Yogi Ferrell stack. A lot of marketing, tons of Giannis, which I completely agree with on FanDuel. Good amount of Dennis Smith Jr. Alex Len was underpriced. That looks good. So a lot of Len, Kuzma. I like a lot of that. It's, besides the stupid d dueling Mavs backcourt, I'd get rid of Yogi Ferrell and some other part of that to oh, because you're going to have to find somebody at 3,900. I mean, if you really wanted to fit Tony Parker in there, I wouldn't think it was dumb, but... Which is exactly what's happening here. Man, maybe I like this more than I thought. Maybe it really is just a, a big balance of a bunch of guys, and you got to fit those puzzle pieces together tonight. We'll find out. Log before lock. 6 o'clock. Be there, or be somewhere else. Bye.